buckle up your laser-powered seat belts, it's... Science! Science! Filling in for Derek Gilbert today, I am Josh Peck, joined by my lovely wife and best friend, Christina Peck, filling in for Sharon K. Gilbert. Hi. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Derek and Sharon are out of the studio today, so we will be filling in, but they will be back next week, so don't worry. Lots of interesting stories today. Um, first off, what we were talking about earlier, uh, they have discovered a, um, a radio burst, and they actually tracked it to its galaxy of origin. Yes, yes. It says that it originated in a galaxy roughly about 6 billion light years away. Um, in a, the constellation of Canis Major. Yeah, a lot, a lot of times these, these things come up a lot. They uh, uh, will discover some new radio burst or something from a different galaxy, and then it always brings up the question is, could this be from alien life or some other type of civilization out there? Right, and a lot of it, I mean, we can get the same radio waves and things from, uh, from uh, pulsars and quasars. Neutron lot, stars, neutron stuff like stars. that. Yeah, exactly. It, it's constantly pulsating radiation and many different kinds of waves. Um, so it's not always aliens. <laughs> so <laughs> Sometimes, but not always. <laughs> but no, it's a, it's a big thing. You know, when people even uh, hear the possibility of radio waves, they, they, they jump to the, that it's aliens. It's got to be aliens. It doesn't, no. It, it, no, <laughs> no. Our stars give off many different r waves. So. Right. Yeah, and a lot of times uh, headlines will use these, we use sensational titles to try to lure people in and they'll say, you know, is it an alien on another planet mm -hmm. or, you know, they'll say something like yeah, that. Absolutely. Uh, luckily, this, this one didn't, though. This, this one st stayed pretty uh, scientific about it. Yes. So, uh, so that was good. But uh, yeah, it says detection offers clues to uh, matter hiding in space between galaxies. So it, it really gets into the dark matter discussion and even dark energy, the expansion of the universe. Which is very fascinating because you don't really hear a whole lot about that in these type of articles. Like you said, it's all about aliens and, uh, oh, somebody's trying to contact us. They're, they're <laughs> finally beaming in, you know? Um, so sticking strictly to the science, this article is amazing. Yeah, and we will be getting into more into the expansion of the universe in, a, in another story a little later. But first, First, I want to talk about Li-Fi. Mm, yes. Um, they say that it's 100 times faster than your Wi-Fi. The only thing that it can't do is move through the wall. So it, yeah. it, you know, it, it is a good, to a certain extent, they say, that um, it's harder for people to hack in. You have to have your smartphone like, out in the light for, in, for it to work. Um, so smaller enclosed spaces. Is, yeah. is safer. Is yeah, safe. yeah. It's it's really interesting that it, it's basically uh, wireless internet, but powered through a light bulb right. that you would have in the room anyway, and uh, it, it blinks rapidly, but you know, too rapid for our eyes to pick up Just on. Just like but our LEDs, the yeah. fluorescent bulbs, and things like that. Yeah, yep. it's almost like a Morse code, and that's how it transfers information. But it, it says you can uh, you can download up to twenty something DVDs a, a second or a minute or mm -hmm. something. Uh, it, I mean, imagine what uh, the world would do with that kind of internet speed. Right, <laughs> 200 gigabytes per second. Wow. That's amazing. Imagine if we had that. Yeah. That's a lot, that's some pretty heavy duty technology right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, also, speaking of heavy duty um, technology, artificial intelligence is in the news again today. I mean, this, this, is, a, uh, this is a pretty constant thing, but um, Th this this time it's talking about how artificial intelligence is going to change the world. It's going to change our lives, and they even held a meeting at uh, at the MIT Tech Conference mm -hmm. to talk about the different ways that artificial intelligence can enrich our lives and make it better and all that all that stuff. But there's dangers too. Oh, there are dangers, and of course they don't they don't tell you the dangers. They 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 show you what good it can do, like. Oh, there's an extra ro robotic arm for, for you to drive your car if you are too drunk to drive. Instead of just staying off the road, mm -hmm. why not try to risk your life anyway and the lives of others? Because, you know, it is technology and it does fail. Yeah. So, you know, it, 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 they, they say it's good, but it's not always good. It's not always safe. Yep. 
And even even Stephen Hawking and a couple other scientists have expressed their own uh, their own worries. Mm -hmm. um, Stephen Hawking, it says, believes artificial intelligence could doom the human race, uh, and he's not alone apparently. So uh, Bill Gates is another one that mm -hmm. uh, that that believes this could be uh, potentially dangerous for. For, for the world and for all of us. And it, and, it, and it could be, there's a lot of different ways this could go wrong, but I, I think like just about any other science out there, good things and bad things. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And you know, he, his quote is, profound consequences may uh, you know, occur with this. So, and uh, a lot of them, they always, they always tie back to you know, Terminator and mm -hmm. how the machines will take over and become self-aware and things like that. So it's, yeah. You know, I, I don't know how accurate that can be, but, mm -hmm. you know, things can go wrong. Like I yep. said, you know, technology the, fails. Yes, that's the dark side of artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And another dark side of artificial intelligence is this idea that they want to connect everything. Uh, your refrigerator, your coffee pot, everything's going to be wired in. Smart houses. Smart houses. Mm -hmm. And um, imagine if somebody were to hack that, you know. Exactly. I, I, w I would have to imagine that the, the password encryption on your refrigerator isn't going to be as tight as maybe your computer or laptop. Mm -hmm. So if somebody can get in that way, uh, they could get into that everything. Is, that is so dangerous. I mean, of course, they don't tell you that. But just imagine what can happen. And, you know, they did a... Um, a movie about this years ago called Smart House. I think it was on the Disney Channel actually when I was younger. Um, and the artificial intelligence within the home became self-aware and you know, not that that would happen, but mm -hmm. kind of the downside of a smart home is how easily something can go wrong. And you know, yeah. they locked them inside their ho the home and they had to get in and destroy the, 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 the mother brain, mm -hmm. the motherboard of the, um, of the computer running the home. Yeah, I remember an old episode of Outer Limits that was the, the same thing. Yeah. The, uh, but in this one, the, the computer that was running the house became, like, basically fell in love with the, the owner and got really jealous. And when he they, had a girlfriend, I remember yeah, that. We, yeah, we and watched that. So he, the, the house tried to kill her, and it was, it was all a big ordeal. Mm -hmm. And he had to, it was basically the same premise. They had to go in and, and take out the, the main CPU or something. Right, um, you know. But, a lot of episodes of Outer Limits were like that, where yeah. there would be some artificial intelligent robot that just because it had consciousness, it would uh, cause a lot of problems for everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a common theme. Um, but, you know, artificial intelligence, uh, while some may use that as an attempt to make a ha have a creation in man's own image mm -hmm. um there are certain and i'm not th this isn't technically artificial intelligence but there are certain maybe we could call them benefits such as this story here that says that scientists are working on prosthetics controlled by your mind now again there are dangerous implications to that as well uh but i mean imagine a wounded soldier and uh you know m missing a limb i mean anything mm -hmm. that we could do to make his life a little easier you'd think would be good but Brain implantation, putting a right. computer chip in a brain. Ah, I don't know about that. I know, just like our <laughs> GPS is on our phones. You know, when um, I went off the road when we were moving here with, with all the snow and the ice. Right. Um, you know, to track where I was when I was on the phone with the, the insurance company, it says, I, you know, we like to track your location. Will you allow us to do that using the GPS on my phone? Imagine how crazy that would be if you're lost or in some so weird situation. You have to allow somebody to track you using your brain implant. Yeah. You know, and, and it can be used for good, but it can also <laughs> be used for evil. Yeah. Well, I know for me personally, nobody's putting any microchips in my brain. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> now, something else that's interesting, and this gets talked about, uh, this gets talked about every, really every couple of months that something like this comes up, is um, the, the problem of infinity mm -hmm. in, uh, in the universe. Or um, the, with, with this headline, it, it's, uh, will the universe end in a big rip? And mm -hmm. it, it goes into uh, talking about the expansion of the universe and how eventually, um, some physicists believe that eventually uh, the universe will just rip apart um, because the expansion will uh, just just overtake its its stability. So, uh, but other physicists say that that's not going to happen because the universe is 
infinite. It's right. infinitely old or and or infinitely big. Right. And this has been something that I remember growing up. They would always say that, no, it's condensing. It's going back to a singularity. The big crunch. Uh, yeah, the big crunch, the big freeze, mm -hmm. or it's going to get too hot because of the, 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 the way everything is moving. You know, it's either one or the other, two extremes. And yes, I've heard of the big rip before. It's, it's like every few months or every few years, they go back and forth like, oh, the, mm -hmm. now now there's, you know, proof and, or evidence that this might happen now, and they keep on going back and forth. This might be another case of one of those uh, sensational headlines mm -hmm. to, to draw people in, but this is a legitimate concern that physicists have. Um, now, you know, people like you and I, we, we can look to the book of Revelation or, mm -hmm. you know, we can look at these prophetic texts and, and know that something's going to happen. The elements are going to burn with a fervent heat. But what process God will use for that? Exactly. You know, who knows? Mm -hmm. um, so maybe there is a legitimate concern there. Uh, but the problem with infinity in the universe, which comes up quite a bit, is the universe infinitely old or infinitely big? I say no. No, no. <laughs> I don't. I, you know, I agree with you there because I feel like the universe is within a space and you can't have infinite time in a three-dimensional space right. where we are. And I know that four dimensions can occur within space and time and things like that. But even with four dimensions, I don't feel that it can be infinite. Mm -hmm. that there has to be um, an end. And the only time there can, there can be any way uh, for something to be infinite is outside of time. Yeah, God himself. Right. So in, in the heavens mm -hmm. and, you know, the higher heavens and the higher dimensions where God is, time does not exist. Mm -hmm. And he's infinite. And that's the only place I believe that it can really take place. Because yeah. if within our space and time, if it's infinite, then we're infinite. <laughs> right. And, and we're not. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and what that means is because uh, in, in the, the concept of infinity is a notion where 1% and 100% are equal because what's 1% of infinity? Infinity. Infinity, exactly. Mm -hmm. So we, we know that we occupy a space. We mm -hmm. occupy a certain section of the universe. We occupy a, uh, a percentage of the universe. If the universe is infinite, our percentage would have to be infinite too. Exactly. I'm, uh, I'm certainly putting on weight, but I am not <laughs> infinitely big. <laughs> and no. uh, same goes for age. Um, I'm not infinitely old. The, the age of the earth isn't infinitely mm -hmm. old. Um, so uh, a, a temporal infinity can't exist in physical reality either. You know, there, interestingly enough, uh, Albert Einstein once thought that uh, the universe may have been infinitely old. He, he believed that it was spatially finite, right. but temporally infinite. And uh, once he, um, once Dr. Hubble uh, showed him about the expansion of the universe, after that he recanted his uh, theory and he called it his biggest blunder. Exactly. And I, you know, we were discussing a little bit the, about this yesterday. A uh, mathematician, German mathematician, uh, said that it's impossible to yep, have. Gauss. Gauss, yes. He, he, it's impossible to have infinite infinity in mathematics and mm -hmm. in physics and things like that. So it really makes you think to go back and look at some of these math problems we have even, and that ex explains infinity as, yeah. as the answer. Is it really infinity? Does it really yeah. go on forever? Yeah, Ga it's, Gauss it's even... It's interesting. It is. Gauss even went as far as to say any problem that comes up infinite that solution needs to be thrown out because it's nonsensical. Exactly. Yet more and more we see, uh, you know, the more science progresses, the more this idea of infinity is embraced. Uh, you know, the singularity before the Big Bang was infinite. It was mm -hmm. an infinite singularity. And then it expanded to an infinite. infinite. It's just infinity on top of infinity. And to me, in a lot of those uh, scenarios, it's it's almost like a desperate attempt to write God out of the equation. Right, exactly. <laughs> yep, and you know, man always is trying to prove that there is no God, but they always come up with, well, we really can't say that there's not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we'll just say there's not, but we can't really prove it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like throw, uh, throw infinity on there and that'll, and that'll that will fix solve it. it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> infinity well. <laughs> proves that there's no God. No? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what they try to convince us. Well, lots of interesting science stories uh, today. And if you're interested in this type of thing, I, I, I actually am going to be having a new show uh, into the multiverse with Josh Peck, which I know uh, Derek and Sharon have talked about before. 
so uh, I feel confident that I can uh, talk about it when I'm filling in. Um, so that, that will be uh, coming up shortly. Uh, also, next week, Derek and Sharon will be back in the studio to continue Sci Friday. Uh, so I want to thank you all for watching. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com backslash skywatch TV underscore official, or you can just uh, click on the subscribe button if you're viewing this on YouTube. Uh, also, don't forget to check us out on Roku. Um, there's various other outlets. Go to skywatchtv.com for all that information. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us today on Sci Friday. Uh, and as I always say, take care and God bless. From the time she was little, Nita dreamed of horses. Every childhood fantasy rode on the back of a heroic white steed, coming to save the day. I don't know how long I've had this love in my heart for horses. It's just always been there. And when we were little girls, my sister and I would play all day long. I was always the white horse and she was always the little pink pig. But everything changed in a heartbeat. On December 9th, 1971, a tragic car accident claimed the life of my dad and my best friend and my little sister. And I wondered after that if there was anything left to believe in. As a child of 13, I felt like I had lost practically everything. And I wondered, is this it? I mean, where do I go from here? I could not have imagined back then how God could use horses, of all things, to restore my faith and vision for the future. Starting April 19th, get your copy of Nita Horn's inspirational new book, No Fences, and learn for the first time her amazing story of loss, survival, determination, and healing. How the vision and love God gave her for these beautiful and majestic animals eventually led to the 150-acre Whispering Ponies Ranch, a general retreat facility, as well as a premier training location that specializes in using and gifting therapeutic animals to benefit the herding, other care facilities, schools and ministries across the nation. When God puts something in your heart, it's there for a lifetime. To celebrate the release of Nita Horn's inspiring new book, No Fences, Skywatch TV would like you to tell your story, because after all, even if you don't think so, you actually have a story. Send in your story and we are going to choose the 10 best and they'll be published for Christmas release in an anthology of those stories along with the book that you uh, buy that is actually only 1995. Am mm -hmm. I right on that? That's correct. For free. Tom Horn, crazy guy, he's throwing in a journal which on its own, these most of these retail for $20 on their own. So this journal is to help you start writing your story. Mm -hmm. When you buy the book, not only are you going to be uh, enrolled in this and you can send in your story, 
but you'll get a plastic pony, you'll mm -hmm. get a journal of your own, and the proceeds from the book are going to help fund the studio we're building for Skywatch Women. Mm -hmm. And Nita Horn is going to be one of our panel members. The 10 authors who are selected for the anthology published by Defender Publishing in time for Christmas will also receive a $500 cash and prize. That, uh, that'll go a long way at Christmas time, won't it? <laughs> yes, it will. Even if your story is not one of those selected for the anthology, if you've taken the time to write your story, you've left a legacy for your children and for your grandchildren. Amen to that. For complete instructions and uh, details on this uh, opportunity, please log on to skywatchtv.com slash no fences.